So let me just think about it for a second. Uh, so one way that I want to describe it is, so the other, the other part that I have to hesitate is, you have to repeat what you did from the first time, right? So the first time is that control period. So just what I was telling you about at the beginning. So whatever I did in that first time, I could do whatever I wanted to do, but I had to then repeat it the second time. So that meant I had to have a cheeseburger and french fries the first time in order to be able to do it the second time. So I don't want to sound like you know I just spontaneously decided to walk out and get a cheeseburger, though I did the first time. Anyway, I'm being overly technical. Um, dumb it down. you got to dumb it down. I am. I am. I'm just trying to think. I don't want, but I, I, want, I don't want to be misrepresentative. So, um, so just for layman's so purposes, so, uh, so what I'm going to say is, you know, when I was actively on this, I was free to go out and get my dinners and have lunch and eat what I wanted to eat. And it was awesome. It's about as simple as it gets. I mean, you may say more, I can. You know, the, so, the, so, but if you weren't on that, what would you have done differently? And can you contrast life without an artificial fingers versus life That's what I'm trying rather to than I see, okay, okay, okay. okay. You don't yes. have to check your blood, you don't have to yeah. push your palms. Okay. So first thing I want to say is, this system is what's called a control to range system. Um, it's what we see as one of the early stage steps towards the automation of, of, of insulin for people with type 1 diabetes. Control to range means the system is working to keep me within a broad range of blood sugars. So if you know, your typical viewer isn't going to know what a good number is, so I probably shouldn't use a number. But it's, going to, it's working to keep me within a broad range as opposed to trying to keep me at a specific number. And once I'm back in that range, it, it yeah, forget it. It's not worth <laughs> So what do you not, like she was saying, you don't have to prick your finger, yeah. you don't have to push your palm, kind of talk about those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, so, I, I, so. So this is. I'm gonna give you stuff, so again, because this was a clinical trial, yeah. I had to stick my finger more often, not less. Oh yeah. So you know, it's okay. because they needed the data. But yeah. maybe right, you but, but I've got a way to, I've got a way, I've got a way to cover it. So here's the deal. So let me give you a good example. The first night that I was on the system, I went and I had a Five Guys cheeseburger and some french fries. I did not eat a whole cup of french fries, just a few french fries, but still, I was a pretty interesting indulgent. Uh, I was indulging myself there. Not an easy meal to understand how to bolus for. Um, I used the, the, the system and decided that I would give myself about two units of insulin, and my blood sugars never went above 200. That's amazing. Normally, with two units of insulin and a cheeseburger and some fries, I told you we'd be doing this. Normally, with a cheeseburger and some fries and only two units of insulin, I would have gone through the roof. And I was pretty much expecting to watch my blood sugars go way too high. But the system was on the job. And as I started to rise up out of the, the range that it wanted me to be in, it started to give me extra insulin. And then I watched the number plateau and then watched it come back down and then land exactly where it was supposed to be. And then it kept me there perfectly overnight. So it gave me extra insulin to prevent me from going too high, and then once it had me back where it wanted to be, it dialed the insulin back and shut it off so that I wouldn't go any further down and go low. How's that? Is that, is that, is that good? Did you able to sleep through the night for the first time in a long time? Or did you not because it was a trial and you were getting up and checking? No, I did sleep through the night, so, so let me continue that story. Okay. So, Normally, a person who lives with type 1 diabetes worries when you give yourself extra insulin late in the evening, probably means that you're going to have a problem going low in the middle of the night, and you're going to have to wake up at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock and be doing extra, eating extra food or doing something because you've gone dangerously low. And so going to bed, I frankly was worried that the researchers were going to be awake. They were remotely monitoring me because this has that ability that they were going to have to come into my, my bedroom at this B&B &B and say, wake up and eat this. And so I pretty much going to bed said to them, I'll see you sometime during the night. And amazingly, that did not happen. The thing did exactly what it was supposed to do. As I was back down into the normal range, it pulled back on the insulin, and then it kept me right where I was supposed to be. I had perfect overnight control. I went to bed pretty much where I woke up. And most type 1s can't say that. I'm sorry to be over te te overly technical with you. It's just I don't want people, people right. get too excited about this. Sure. This is still experimental device. This yeah. is still research. I don't want people immediately thinking, oh my God, I got to go get that, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, this is step by step. So here's an important point. 
This technology didn't exist in 2005. Step by step, JDRF is driving this forward. It's not going to all arrive at once, but each step is a significant movement forward that's going to significantly reduce the burden of living with this disease, improve our quality of life, until ultimately one day it is really able to take over a heck of a lot of the management, the day-to-day, minute-to-minute, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, never stopping management of type 1 diabetes. How far out are we, do you think? From several years, still several years worth of, of work to, we're going to have to do it further trials. You know, this is, I was talking about how many phases of trials, there's phase ones, there's phase twos, there's phase threes, and in each phase there's two sets of trials to each phase, so there's a lot of work left to do here. Um, this is not an inexpensive thing to do, this is, it takes a lot of work and costs us a lot of money. So JDF needs to raise a lot of money and we need to continue to fund these trials in order to see this become commercially available. Um, JDRF fully intends to see this become commercially available and we'll get there within the next few years, but it's gonna be a few years. So since you've been in the trial and you have the device, why don't they just leave you hooked up while you're... Because it's experimental. So if, I was, if I'm out living my normal life and I'm not near, so the point of this was I mean, there I was. I that they need their data during the three days. Right, right, right. But, but, but this is still experimental. So if something were to go dramatically go wrong, God knows what it would be. I can't imagine it. But that's the whole point. The, there was an endocrinologist within five minutes of me. Okay. okay. Now, if I'm on my farm, I have a Christmas tree farm in the mountains of Virginia. So if I'm on my farm, I'm a good 30 minutes from, well, from an immediate doctor, medical care, yeah. and I'm, I'm an hour from an endocrinologist. Gotcha. So uh, these are risks that they're not ready to take yet. Yeah. But we'll get there, right? We're moving there. That's the next step, frankly, is going to be go home, go live a long period of time away from, from, from control uh, or, you know, immediate, because you don't need it. It is fundamentally, this is technology. So technology breaks, one, we all know when our phone doesn't turn on right or our car won't start, and we, and we know what to do. And it's the same thing here. If my pump stops working, I know it's not working, and I take over and do what I need to do. Same with this. If this stops working, if something doesn't go right, I'll be able to step in and take care of it. But right now, it's still experimental. So we're working very hard to make sure it's as safe as it can possibly be, and that it's uh, sort of a no-brainer in understanding how to manage it when things don't go the way you want it to. Great. All right. Anything else you want to add about it? <laughs> you guys have heard me talk about it a lot. So um, what other? Can you give um, your analogy or experience of how, even though you're in a setting in the hospital, not in this most recent trial, but in general, that that's still the greatest vacation you've ever had? Uh, that's an interesting one to make. So, and I'll, I'll update it to this time. So there's a remarkable young woman um, who lives in Chicago who actually was doing one of these trials. and her family was having a discussion one time about what their favorite vacation was and uh, all the kids were listing, oh I loved it when we went skiing, I loved it when we went to the beach and she came to her and she said my favorite vacation was when I was on the artificial pancreas and I have to honestly say it's the absolute truth. Uh, every time I'm on this thing I'm blown away. Uh, it's like having this fantastic vacation. I, the challenge of having type 1 diabetes and insulin is any food becomes the challenge every time you eat something you have to take insulin to compensate for it it never stops right the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up is check my blood sugars and eat something and have to do insulin the last thing I'm doing before I go to bed and often what I'm doing in the middle of the night is dealing with my diabetes when this system takes over I don't have to do that and it's a pretty awesome vacation right it's pretty it's pretty blows you away when they were ready to turn the system off at the end of the three days, I did not really want to have to give it back. Frankly, I would love to have said, oh, just let me slip this in my pocket and let it continue to run things. It was, it's, uh, it's the best vacation I've had in years.